thank you so much uh, for being here um, with the Associated Press. I know this has a, been a very, very difficult, um, very stressful, very sad um, period of months. I know you've been here this week meeting with different Washington officials, and I know there was a discussion with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan as well as Attorney General Merrick Garland, and I, I think that might actually be the first time that you sat down at the Justice Department. So um, is there anything that you can share about what you learned or what you may have discussed in those meetings? Well, one of the most remarkable things, I think, in all of our journey, uh, this tragic, unfortunate journey that we're on, is the degree of, of partnership and, and true commitment that we've witnessed from the Biden administration and all of the senior officials we've met, uh, including um, this week with the National Security Advisor and the Attorney General. It also shows the disconnect between how much the administration is doing to the visibility of the 45 Americans that were murdered on October 7th and the fact that there are eight Americans still in captivity, five of which are alive, three are being declared murdered, and uh, how there is uh, ignorance in the street, not understanding the, uh, the crisis and the humanitarian uh, crisis level of all the other hostages that are in captivity. Do you mean that the administration is doing lots of work on behalf of your loved ones, but it's your sense that in America, in the United States, there's apathy or, or a lack of awareness or interest in, in the sadness and plight that your families are going through? Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's also a lack of knowledge, as Lynette mentioned. I think the majority of the U.S. people are not aware that on October 7th, this was also an attack on the United States. 45 U.S. citizens were killed. That has not happened since 9-11. It's difficult to be the ones that are, you know, carrying the torch constantly for our loved ones, but they have no voice, and so we have no choice. And as long as they're still there, we are speaking up. Now, quite honestly, we're not sure if our loved ones are still alive, but the only way they are going to emerge alive from uh, these Hamas tunnels is through some sort of negotiated agreement with the devil, which is... Hamas. Um, Hamas clearly has to be forced to, or coerced, to enter negotiations to complete them. Um, that requires, in this case, military force. But I think almost wall to wall in Israel, um, there's a desire to stop the suffering of the Gazan people. I, I am curious to hear you talk a little bit about, on a daily basis, how you go about your, your lives. And what it is that you do that gets you through the day? What kind of thoughts do you have that help you sustain yourself, sustain your families, move forward in life? Because it's like it's pain that I can't imagine. I, I think it's a personal choice, uh, but for most of us, uh, we are doers. So we wake up in the morning and we say, what are we doing today? What's on the agenda? What's my to-do list to enhance, to, to make sure that things are progressing in the right direction? What can I do? to make sure that my son would come back home. That being said, October 6th was a different life. Nothing is the same for us. We're not working or barely working, or we're working at releasing our son and advocating for the hostages. And that's, that's what we've been doing every single day since. And, and uh, like Roman said, if we're not doing, then we're thinking we don't want to be there. We, we need to stay positive and we need to stay hopeful and, and keep moving.